Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. As you can see behind me, I'm in the dark room making some prints of a car show that I recently went to, where I took a couple of rolls of Kodak 5222 motion picture film, commonly called Kodak BWXX, or whatever people want to call it if they're loading it themselves. And I wanted to see how that film performed in this recommended developer D96 and also the recommended developer uh, fixer, sorry, BWXF5. What's up with all these names? Jeez, I just call them something simple. Fixer, developer, give it a simple name. What's with all the numbers and letters? Drives me up the wall. I'll let the video run. So in this video, I went to a classic British car show on a bright sunny day to try out Kodak 5222 motion picture film better known as Kodak Double X. Not only that, I wanted to see what all the fuss was with using the recommended developer D96. Whilst I was there, I saw an enthusiast taking pictures on his camera phone, I'll show you those later, and another enthusiast that likes to shoot exclusively on Polaroid, and a quick interview with Ben is coming up soon. Dave B was singing away whilst I was waiting for the bar to open, which never did, and Chris recognized me from the channel, and we had a good chat about film photography. And I also got light leaks, lovely jubbly. The gear I took was a Nikon FM3A 35mm film camera, a Zeiss Milvus F1.4 50mm lens, a Nikon 85mm 1.8 lens, and a Nikon Micro 55mm 1.8 lens. And I also took a Leica Q2 monochrome digital camera, which was a waste of time because I forgot the SD card. And of course, a couple of rolls of the Kodak XX. And I forgot to mention that I've already got a 28mm lens on the camera ready to go. That is what I intend to use mostly. Now this show was all about the Morris Minor, a classic British motor car, and there was many there to photograph and test out this film and developer with on this bright sunny day. And that bar in the background never did open. And remember Gaz, this guy? Well, I went with Gaz, and he had limited time because his wife had ordered him home by midday. He's so under the thumb, is Gaz. And although I gave him a film camera a while back, he just loves to use that Popsy camera phone. But he did get some awesome compositions out of it, which I'll show you later. And Gaz also held my diffuser a few times, which was a bonus. So what is Kodak Double X? So if you don't know what Kodak Double X is, I'll quickly briefly explain it to you. <laughs> no, he's broke me out. Right, you owe me £10. <laughs> so if you can imagine a black and white film so good that they used it in blockbuster cinematic movies such as The Lighthouse in 2019, Schindler's List in 1993, Raging Bull in 1980, Casino Royale in 2006 and recently new blockbuster film called Oppenheimer. Eastman Kodak 5222 film was introduced in 1959 and Alfred Hitchcock got straight on it with his Psycho in 1960. And Kodak are still knocking out this classic emulsion today for cinematography in various formats. And if you go onto the Kodak website, there is a ton of information on this film. You can even buy the film in 400 foot tins where Kodak lists the price at around about $316. Now 400 foot of this stuff won't fit in my bulk loader, so if I did decide to buy 400 foot of it, I'd have to split it into 100 foot lengths in total darkness and then load it into my cassettes. But if you hunt around, you can find this film already pre-rolled for us film nuts to use. Cine Steel, they call it BWXX. Cat Labs call it X Pro 320. I think that's uh, Kodak 5222. Silbera, they call it 52XX. And there's also other black and white motion picture films out there for us to use, such as Oro UN50. And even I bring one out called BW Triple X 400. It's the same stuff, but I give you the times for a 400 development. I've got them in the back of the van. And you can easily tell if your film is made for cinema by looking at the sprocket holes. Conventional films look like this, the ones that we all use, and motion picture films, the sprocket holes look like this, sort of rounded off. They call it the Ben and Howe perforations. I'm not exactly sure why this is, maybe it's to strengthen the film as it runs through the movie camera at 24 frames a second, or maybe those cameras just have different sprocket gears. If you know, drop it in the comments below for everyone to read. So recently my friend Rupert visited the Isle of Wight and we went for a photo shoot and made some prints in my darkroom. When he left, he gave me two rolls of this Kodak 5222, already pre-rolled by a company called Nick and Trick in Folkestone, and he also gave me the recommended developer and fixer for this film. 
Now I've already got a bunch of this film in my fridge, but I was interested to know if the developer and fixer makes any difference. Usually I'll develop this film in whatever tickles me fancy. But with Kodak Double X being a contrasty film, the D96 developer is supposed to be a low contrast developer and complements Kodak Double X perfectly. I want to find out if it does. I got into photography in lockdown, just thought I'd been looking at screens for too long, um, you know, doing nothing or looking at screens is pretty much what everyone got up to, and then I thought well, analogue photography might be good to get out and something that's not screens, get me out of the house doing stuff, but I didn't know how to develop film or where to go to get it, and I thought, well actually Polaroid just does it all for you, so I thought, well, let's try it. I looked on eBay and there were cameras going for next to nothing, and I thought, well, there's my thing. So shocked at the price of the film but once you get over that you just kind of enjoy it and try and get um yeah see what you can do with it then it's a bit of a learning curve as well and you get eight shots out of that right yes one pack eight shots for about how much is a pack uh, it's 18.99 from polaroid if you buy them there plus delivery of about seven quid and we could blame about 35 millimeter film so you'll get eight shots what do you do with those eight shots uh, after today what, what are you doing with your polaroids um they'll go in a box somewhere at home i've got like a small stash on the go um the good ones or the ones that i think are interesting go up on instagram I just get a picture with my phone and then just kind of put the post that picture on on instagram just as like a, a memento um meet lots of other people on instagram as well who are also into polaroid discover there's a whole community of people around and they're into polaroid and and Instax cameras as well. So yeah, it's quite nice to kind of share it with others. So. Thanks a lot, Ben. No Thanks for showing us, cheers. No worries, nice to meet you. Good luck, cheers, have a good day. So that was Ben that I met at the show. And what an interesting chap. He's got this project on the go that he shoots Polaroid. Eight shots for 18.99 plus delivery. Um, we made about 35 mil being expensive, but if you're dedicated to your hobby, that's what you want to do. He says he takes them home and puts them in a the box, but he also puts them on his Instagram account as well, where he says there's a community of people doing the same sort of thing. And I think it's great that people have got these little projects and little hobbies, no matter how much it costs, if they enjoy it, they enjoy it, and that's what Ben enjoys. So uh, good luck to you, Ben. It was nice meeting you, mate. And on another note, if anybody coming away from the video now, guys, I've dropped my anti Newton glass for my larger, fumbling around in the dark room during this video. Uh, it fits this Syrian, I can't ever pronounce these bloody names, Syrio neg, uh, negative carrier for Durst. I think it's about a six by six anti-Newton glass. If anyone's got one, drop me um, a message on DM or something uh, that I can buy off them because these are few and far between. I've broke mine, it just flattens the negs under the carrier, but this is broken now, so I can't use it. Let us know, guys, I'd appreciate it, cheers. These were the D96 test shots that I took from the second roll. It's a contrasty scene showing some cushions next to window light and also another of my neighbor in the low evening sun. And they looked great developed in D96 stock for four and a half minutes at 21 degrees using my rotary processor. I had to pop the developer in the fridge to cool down as it was standing in the kitchen at 25 degrees. When I got round to developing the car shots in the D96, I forgot to call the D96 down and it went in at 25 degrees at the same time, but it didn't seem to make an impact, so I was quite lucky there. While I was at the car show, I slowed right down, taking my time and writing notes of all my shots for reference. I couldn't help but wonder about the blood, sweat and tears that went into making these British classic cars. And I bet the guys that made these cars would never imagine that 60 years on there would be a field on the Isle of Wight where the cars were on display, cherished and loved by the owners, having the photos taken on camera phones and uploaded to a channel on the internet. So I'll let you see the scans that I took and I've also put down some information about the lens, the aperture and also the car type as well.
So the D96 scans, they come out really nice, other than the light leak that I've got, which I'll have to investigate what that was. I couldn't, I couldn't replicate it, so it's a real, it's really stumped me. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the uh, scans, you can see, come out really nice. The leader has come out really nice as well, and that was the test shot that I cut off of that roll of film um, to test the D96 in, and they've come out okay. That was D96 at 25 degrees, four and a half minutes. And I then shot the second roll intended for the rod knoll, which uh, was too weak. I put it in for four and a half minutes at 20 degrees. The rod knoll came out too weak. You can see they're a little bit thinner, but they're still recoverable. And I wasn't happy there. So I decided to ask my neighbor to get his motorcycle out of his garage. It was still a bright sunny day, just so I could test out the rod knoll again. And these are the ones that I got this time for seven minutes in rod knoll, rotary processed at 20 degrees. Uh, and they've come out nice just as nice as the d96 i think but i'm going to have to do a print of one of these and one of the d96s as well and just compare the two and see how they come out So if you've never shot the Kodak XX or Kodak 5222, whatever it is, um, before, grab a roll. It is a good, interesting film to shoot. And like I said at the start, it's good enough for Hollywood. It's good enough for us shooting stills with. And they recommend this is the D96 developer. This is from Bellini and also the Fixer, which is BWFX5, they call it, again, from Bellini. Um, the Fixer comes in two parts. So this has got 800 mil inside and there's another little additive that you pour in, which is 200 mil that makes up the um, one litre of Fixer. Um, but the developer is just one bottle and you use it as stock. What I've done is I've put, um, because I'm using that rotary process, I only need 200 milliliters of solution to develop any film so i used the little fixer bottle which was 200 mil i put my stock solution the developer in there obviously washed it out and i put the rest of it inside this accordion bottle to keep it nice and preserved so that will be fresh for probably about six months or so while i literally develop the shit out of this one and when this passes by i can just switch it over and put some new fresh in so that's what i've done there that's why this is empty but I wanted to see if we really did need to use this stuff online. It says it's a lower contrast for this film, lower contrast developer for this film. And I put it against Rodnoll. And when I looked at both negatives under the enlarger using the magnifier, the Rodnoll I could see straight away produced more grain. That was at one part to 50 than the D96. And I must admit, looking at the prints, I think the D96 did beat the Rodnoll on this film, which surprised me. So this is that Triumph Stag, that one came out quite nice. It was nice to try this film on a bright contrasty day uh, with all the chrome, these little tiny spots of chrome and stuff highlighting out, they don't really bother me. Um, that print's come out really nice. And we've got the Ford Escort here. I do love these cars, I used to have one of these when I was younger but not a zooped up version. And uh, just look at those black and whites. This, you know, this is a true black and white film. I love, I could have put a zero filter in there and made it less contrasty, but I just love my prints when they're contrasty, hard hitting black and white. You know, that's why we're shooting black and white. We want to see black and whites. I've got mid-tones going on as well in the chromes and stuff, but that's a really nice print. And another one here, this was the Aston Martin. I did the interior shot with the 85 mil lens. That one's come out really nice. I had to do a bit of burning on the, on the wheel. That was a bit too white for me. So I just did a little tiny bit of burning, but again, another nice print. And this is uh, my neighbor's motorbike, motorcycle. Um, this is an old Yamaha from the eighties. And this was the print, that I, a negative that I developed in Rodnoll. Under the enlarge I showed you, you could see the grain. It does, up, up close you can see the grain, but you know, we don't mind grain, that's why we shoot film. And the Rodnoll's done a really good job on this print, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be able to tell if this was D96 or Rodnoll if it wasn't for the grain. All the details, the blacks, the whites, the chromes, they've all come out really nice. And I did one more print there for my neighbour of his motorcycle. Um, that was, again, in the Rodnoll, looking up at the sky, getting the uh, two wing mirrors in and all the handlebars and all the chrome and stuff. Uh, you know, and again, Rodnoll's handled that really well. Nice print. I don't know if I've ever used this stuff before. 
on the channel. I can't remember um, if I if I have. I don't think I've tested it against anything else. Probably James Lane will be sitting there screaming, saying, you've got to use pyro, you've got to use the pyro. But um, <laughs> I'll wait for James's comments to come in. The prints, you probably won't know to see the difference, but I can under the enlarger. And also looking at the prints closely, I can see a difference. The D96 is definitely cleaner than the Rod Knoll, but then, you know, we all know that Rod Knoll, it don't tell no fibs. It is a true developer. If the film's got grain, Rod Knoll's gonna show it. No, you know, there's no two ways about it. Rod Knoll, Rod Knoll is, a, is a beast when it comes to stuff like that. It holds no bars. And as for the light leak, I was really stumped. When I first developed that film, straight away I thought, I know the camera's mustard. I know the camera's good. I, I use it quite a lot, unless it suddenly caught a light leak that I don't, don't know about. Um, but then the second roll that I shot, and developed that came out fine so there must have been it obviously wasn't a, a problem at nick and trick when they was loading this film because the other roll was fine because it seems to be in the same spot on each not each frame particular frames it seems to be in the same area which then points back to the camera again and it also goes on to the rebate of the film as well so i'm really i'm really stumped it's something that i'm going to have to keep my eye on when i'm using that camera in the sun um, maybe do a couple of other tests, but I'm really stumped as to why these light leaks happened. If any of you guys have got a clue or have experienced this before, let us know. It's never happened with that camera before. It's only happened with that one roll, and it didn't happen again after that. So um, on Andy's bike, which was in the sun again, that's exactly what I was looking for the second time round. No light leaks at all. Really strange. Um, <laughs> I ain't got a clue why they're there, but you know, sometimes I think that's the enjoyment of shooting film for me personally little tiny problems like that that occur i enjoy fixing things so you know it is what it is if, if i wanted to get it right perfect every time i'd shoot digital i like shooting films my hobby i enjoy it you guys enjoy it so these little problems that come along now and again um are there for us to play with and try and figure out what went wrong and i also said i'd show you the photographs that uh, gaz took with his mobile phone gaz does find some interesting compositions and he's always sending me pictures i'll show you some of the stuff that he got at the car show his compositions and his angles and also his eye for detail it's actually bloody good <laughs> Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've never tried that Kodak 5222 BWX or whatever, uh, give it a go. It's quite an interesting film. I think the D96 is probably, out of the two, a decent developer to use for it. Um, you know, have a little play to your heart's content and see what you think. I'll catch you next time.